Alright, here goes uh, attempt 6 because my laptop decided to die on me. So let's see how this one goes. Hi, I'm Corey from Cyber 8 UC, the student OWASP chapter from the University of Cincinnati. And today I'm going to be giving to you guys the first of a series of videos on virtual machines and how you can use them. So first off, what is a virtual machine? Basically your computer is going to use some sort of software to generate or emulate uh, another computer that might be running with different hardware or different software, whatever. Uh, we will see a little bit more of that as we move on. So the software that you're going to need to, to run these virtual machines though, uh, two really popular solutions for that are VMware and VirtualBox. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using VirtualBox because it's an open source solution, it's what I'm familiar with, but all of the steps I'm going to go through are going to be very similar in VMware, so if that's what you like, don't be afraid to follow along on that. So why, why do people use virtual machines is also a pretty important question that we need to answer. I already mentioned running with a specific software, perhaps that software is only available on a certain operating system. For example, if I have a Windows machine, but I need to use a software that I can that is only compatible with a Linux operating system, maybe, then I will need to run a virtual machine in order to use that. Maybe you know Linux has some really powerful built-in tools for its operating system. The terminal is incredibly useful. I cannot stress that enough. Just how awesome the terminal is in Linux, and the virtual machine will give you the ability to use those without having to install Linux as the main operating system on a computer. You could run uh, multiple machines at once, perhaps, if you need to use a lot of different computers uh, running. Maybe they're inter interconnected in some way. You need to, need to run all of that at the same time. You can do that thanks to virtual machines. And safety, if you're working with malware, perhaps you're in the field of cybersecurity and you need to sandbox some malware so you don't risk infecting your own computer then virtual machines are a great route to go through because they will isolate that malware being run in the virtual machine from the rest of your computer so let's move on to how you can go about getting your own virtual machines so I've already installed VirtualBox right here and there are two, two ways that you're really going to be going through getting your own virtual machines. Perhaps you've downloaded a pre-built virtual machine. Uh, typically for VirtualBox they're going to be OVA files of some sort. So you just go to File, Import Appliance, and we're going to click this little folder over here to browse. And as you can see here I've got a bunch of different OVA files that I, I've already downloaded ahead of time. Uh, Kali, for example, is a really popular Linux distribution for things like penetration testing and I've got an OVA that someone has gone through, they've installed Kali onto a virtual machine and then they export that as an OVA file. Uh, if you see down here it's an open virtualization format, OVAs and OVFs and that's what we're going to import. It's basically going to have all of the setup information already taken care of for us that we will have to set up. I'll show you that in just a second. So I click open, and next, and these are basically the settings that whoever generated this OVA file went ahead and used. Uh, for example, we see CPU, There's only, it only uses one CPU out of however many your computer might have, it's going to vary depending on how nice your computer is. Uh, it's only using one gig of RAM, you can use more. But keep in mind that when a virtual machine takes these resources, it takes them away from your computer itself in order to use for its own virtual machine. So be careful how much res how many resources you allocate to these. And then down here, you can see this virtual disk image that we're going to be using to install. So a lot of times, if you've got an OVA file or an OVF, you're not going to need to do any changes to these settings. The only ones you you might really need to change are the CPU or the RAM. 
Another one that you, you might want to keep track of is reinitializing the MAC address. A lot of times that's not going to be necessary, but occasionally if you're going to run this same OVA file in multiple virtual machines on the same network, it's going to be a good idea to reinitialize those MAC addresses. So I'm going to go ahead and import this with a new name, so I can just change right here. I'm going to call it Kali Import Demo. I click import, and that's going to take some amount of time, probably not more than about 10 minutes. But seeing as I don't actually need this, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel it here because I've already got several Kali instances, I don't need a new one. But you'll just typically just let that run through and it'll say, hey, we finished. There you go. Now, another way you can get your own virtual machines is by creating them yourself. You click this little icon here called that says New, and we're going to give it a name. Uh, maybe Ubuntu Demo is what I'm going to go ahead and call this. Uh, here we see types. These are the different types of machines you can install. We have Windows, Linux, Solaris, etc. Uh, if you if you when you start putting in a name, oftentimes it will try and match you to your desired type. And then there's different versions. Uh, more than likely, you're just going to be using 64-bit. Most computers are 64-bit now. So we're going to click next. Here we're going to allocate RAM again. Uh, you should allocate enough RAM f for your usage, whatever it is that you need this for. It's going to de determine the amount of RAM you need. I would try not to go below half a gig, 512 megabytes of RAM, but keep in mind that whatever you assign it is going to be lost from your computer, in, while, the, while the virtual machine is running at least. Once you close the virtual machine, those resource, resources are freed up and they go back to your computer to be used. Here, um, we're just going to go ahead and create our own virtual hard disk. Uh, you are going to need one of some sort. You don't technically need to add it in setup. That's why this option is here. Or if you've already got an, a virtual hard disk, you could go with this option. But most of the time, you're probably just going to go ahead and create your own virtual hard disk. Here are some different types of hard disks. For now, we're just going to go with a virtual box disk image. Uh, these each have their own advantages and disadvantages, but VDI is going to be pretty standard on what you want to use. Uh, it's never really going to hurt you to go with a VDI. If you start getting into situations where you need to use virtual hard disks or VMDKs, then you're probably getting to more advanced user stuff, and you don't need this video for that. Alright, so there's two different choices here, dynamically allocated or fixed size. You've got a nice little description on what each of those do here, but uh, we're just going to go with dynamically allocated because most of the time you're not going to need to store a lot of files on these. You don't really need to worry about having a, a lot of space immediately available. And here we're going to be giving the size of this Ubuntu instance's virtual hard drive. 10 gigabytes is probably fine for whatever you might be doing if it's just looking to use the terminal, but you might need to assign it more space. Um, I'm just going to go with 10 gigabytes. I create it, and boom, I've made this virtual machine. But what I haven't done is I have not actually given it an ISO image so that it can put the operating system onto the virtual machine. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. So in a future video, I'll go through more on what each of these different settings are, especially network. That's going to be very important. That's probably going to get its own short little video. But for now, what we want is storage. And then you're going to go ahead and click this little plus here. We're going to, sorry, that was the wrong one. We're going to choose a disk. And you can see here, I've already downloaded several ISOs. I recommend Ubuntu if you are new to Linux operating systems. 
it's a very it's a very standard new users operating system for Linux. It's very popular. It is very well documented, and it is also free, which is important. Most Linux operating systems you can acquire for free. They might ask you to donate to them. I know Ubuntu does, but that's not typically necessary. Ubuntu, you can just go ahead and download the, the ISO from their website. Uh, Ubuntu 16.04.3 desktop. Okay, so this AMD 64, this is a 64 bit version of Ubuntu. I've selected this ISO file, I hit open. And now, the next time when I start up this virtual machine for the first time, it's going to look at this, it's going to see the ISO file, and it's going to put me into the Ubuntu installer so I can install the operating system onto that virtual machine and that'll be the content of our next video thanks so much for joining us please feel free to leave any comments or questions down below if you have any questions for us you can also check us out at our other various social medias and website which will be in the description have a great day